Praise the Lord. Good morning to you, FCC, our online faith family, and to all of you who are watching from wherever you might be watching from. Good Sunday to you, and welcome to church. Amen. Sincerely pray that everybody's prospering and in health, even as our soul is prospering. Amen. Today is a great day. So much going on today, this Sunday. We have Father's Day. We certainly pause to honor every father. Ephesians 6, 1 says, honor your father and your mother, that it might be well with you on the earth. So today we certainly do that. We pause to honor all of our fathers at FCC. We celebrated every father with a gift, and uh, we truly lift up the men of God in our time. We need our men like never before. So blessings to every father. We celebrate you today in Jesus' name. Amen. And then it's Juneteenth, and uh, we certainly, that's a reason to celebrate. 1865, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued by then President Abraham Lincoln, and our ancestors were legally freed uh, on June 19th, 1865. And so that's a day worth acknowledging. We thank God for the federal holiday. It's a day worth celebrating. So we honor and recognize Juneteenth. And then I want to make a quick announcement to Faith Community Church. We're introducing for the first time on June the 29th, instead of having our regular Bible study on Wednesday night, we're having family night. It, you can call it family game night, family movie night. It's going to be a mix of all of it. During the summer months only, during the summer months, once every six weeks, we will have family night. We're going to have food. We're going to have games. We're going to have movies prizes. We're going to have family fun once every six weeks at our church. I want to encourage everybody at FCC to get on board and continue to follow along with the vision of our house. The family unit is the center of all we do at Faith Community Church. So we thank you for being a part of what God is saying and doing at Faith Community Church. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night, June 29th at Family Night. Amen. Today we're talking about accompanying signs, accompanying signs. You know, Jesus, as he prepared to leave the earth, he told his disciples in Mark chapter 16, he said, these signs will follow those who believe. In the New Living Translation, it reads, these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will accompany Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18 reads, Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel. You know, I asked the church the question, when did it become acceptable to do church without accompanying signs? You know, with all of the voices that are going on in the world today, all of the distractions that are going on, how do we discern who's God and who's not? Well, God has always confirmed his word with miraculous signs, miracles, and wonders. And today we're going to explore that in the scriptures, that from the beginning of the Bible to the end, God always used accompanying signs to confirm his word. And there's no signal in the scriptures that God ever said it was to stop. Amen. So we want to ask you to grab your Bible, grab a notepad, follow along with us today, and let's allow the Holy Spirit to teach us as we study out accompanying signs. We're going into our live services, and I look forward to seeing you at the end of the broadcast. <music> Praise the Lord. All right. At our church, we don't believe in messing around. We've had wonderful praise. If you miss praise and worship this morning, God bless you. We had a time in praise and worship. Amen. We did, we've had praise and worship. We've, we've ministered our announcements and given our gifts. Now it's time for the word. Amen. It's time for the word. We've got, we've got a hot and ready word today. So if y'all wouldn't mind holding your Bibles or your devices up and say, Father, thank you that I have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to me right now. Amen. Good to see Ms. Farstein in the house today. Amen. Mama Steen is what they call her. 
That's that's uh, Max's brother, and and we're just so proud. We got Demi in the house. Demi's doing great, and she's in good hands. Amen. Today, I want to talk about for just a few minutes. If y'all give me just a few minutes, I want to talk about accompanying signs. Uh, I, I think this is one of the most um, consequential messages I've ever taught. Accompanying signs, the mark of the gospel. Gallup.com has well documented, along with many other statistical sites, that church attendance is down. How many of y'all know that we don't need to take a poll to know that church attendance is down? Yeah. Church attendance is down all over the country. And uh, Gallup Gallup.com has done scientific polling, and, and they showed that uh, for the first time in history, church attendance is lower than the majority. Less than 50% of Americans are regularly attending church. Less than 50%. That's the first time this happened in American history. The number has usually been as high as 70-80% of Americans attend some kind of church. But for the first time in history, it's fell below 50%. If you're a church person, again, you don't need to know a poll. You don't have to have a poll to know that that's true. Churches are thinning out all over the country. There are many thoughts and opinions as to why church attendance is down. We could be here all day. Instead of rehearsing the various grievances and complaints of those inside and outside the church as to why the church is not growing, today... I want to focus on one absolute needed for church growth and kingdom expansion. One absolute. There's one, there's one thing that we have to have in order for the church to grow. If y'all wouldn't mind turning with me to Genesis 1, 26 and 27, please. I would like for us to read this in our own Bibles. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. We quote at the beginning of every message, we have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. The Spirit of God is speaking this morning. This is Bible, line upon line, precept upon precept, in context. Genesis 1, 26, 27 says, Then God said, if y'all say God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. If y'all would turn to Proverbs 23 and 7, please. We're going to read part A of Proverbs 23 and verse 7. The scripture reads, As a man or woman thinks in his heart, so is he. We just read scripture stating that both man and woman have been made in the same image and likeness of God. Amen. Whatever God speaks out of his mouth, always, if y'all say always, it always comes to pass, Dre. He, does, he never misses. While we are not God, if y'all would say we're not God, we're not God, we have been made to function and operate just like God. We just read it. Did we not just read it? Amen. God said let us make them in our image and just like us. We're to function just like God. What we meditate on continually is going to absolutely come to pass. Because what you meditate on continually is going to eventually come out of you. It's going to come out of your mouth. Because you're meditating on it. Over and over and over again. Y'all turn to Joshua 1 and 8 please. Joshua 1 and 8 very quickly. Moses has done his job. Joshua has taken over. The Lord is speaking to Joshua. Giving him instruction. And he says this book of the law. Shall not depart from your mouth. That's old English writing right there. What he's saying is, don't ever stop speaking the word. Don't let it stop. 
but you shall meditate. That word meditate is the Hebrew word mutter. It means to mutter. You shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that, all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. God's command to Joshua was not followed by a maybe or possibly. The father said, if you want good success, meditate on my word day and night. Because whatever you meditate on continually is going to come out of your mouth and it's going to eventually come to pass. Have y'all ever seen anybody just, just kept speaking something over and over again and this is exactly what happened to them? Have y'all ever seen that? It's the truth. It's a law. Whatever you meditate on, if there, there are people who are just afraid they're going to die, they're going to they get murdered. They're going to get, you know what happens? They get murdered. It happens all the time. God designed us to operate that way. So in God's wisdom, he told Joshua, Joshua, I want you to meditate on my word day and night because whatever you meditate on continually is going to happen to you. Amen? This, this is not in my notes. I just want to encourage you. If you're a person who always watching horror movies and, and, and movies about rape and movies about being killed and, and movies about being stuck, you might want to meditate on something different. Amen. Open the Bible up. Listen, I don't watch that stuff. I, I don't watch stuff that, gets, that tries to get in my spirit and put negative images in my spirit. I don't watch it. I don't watch it. I don't pay attention to it. You might want to put something on that's going to build you up. Today we're talking about accompanying signs, miracles, and wonders, which are all which are all identifiers of the true gospel. I'm convinced that the reason, if y'all say the reason, the church does not see these more often is because we have allowed the word to slip in this area. From Genesis to Revelation, God has always verified himself with undisputable signs confirming his word. Did y'all hear what I just said? From Genesis to Revelation, there's always been accompanying signs. Always. Always. In fact, there's no such thing as the gospel without accompanying signs. Miracles and wonders. I'm submitting to the church today that the reason attendance is down is because the church has become void of signs, miracles, and wonders. Somewhere along the way, Miss Alicia, we have learned, leaned, pardon me, we have leaned more towards intellectualism. Somewhere along the way, we've got into philosophy. We've got into life coaching psychology and other forms of godliness while denying the power y'all turn to first corinthians 2 please i'm moving quickly we come to church and we hear life coaching speeches praise the lord not mad at any life coaches you just got to have some power to go along with it y'all in first corinthians chapter 2 we're going to read verses 1 through 4 this is apostle paul speaking Church, I would, y'all receive this with me. The Apostle Paul says, when I first came to you, dear brothers and sisters, I didn't use lofty words or impressive wisdom to tell you God's secret plan. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified. I came to you in weakness, timid and trembling. And my message and my preaching were very plain rather than using clever and persuasive speeches. I relied only on the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul, we're going to see in just a second, was a guy who could do the thing. He was a bad guy. Paul said, I didn't come to you with any of that. I came to you with power. I came to you with demonstration and power. The word power there that you're reading is dunamis. It's the word dunamis, and it means power of the Holy Spirit. If y'all turn to Philippians 3, please, I want you to read this in your Bible. Philippians chapter 3, verse 5. 
Philippians 3 verse 5. Thank y'all for being a, a cooperating church. We're a church that likes to read the Bible. We like to read the word. Philippians 3 verse 5 through 7. I'm going to use the New Living. I'm not sure which version you're using, but if you read along with me, it says, I was circumcised. This is Paul talking. I was circumcised on the eight, when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, Sarah, I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. I want to translate that into 2022. I want to give you the Pauline translation for 2022. Brother Dre, I graduated from Oxford University. I've got a PhD in biology, biblical theology and biblical and theology studies. I have perfect church attendance. I've never broken the law. All of my children are perfect. I got everything right. And Paul says, I count all of this as nothing that I might gain Christ. Paul was a powerful man. He knew the law backwards and forwards. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was a Hebrew. He followed the law perfectly. And Paul said all of that means nothing. If we don't have signs, miracles, and wonders. That's what power means. That's what dunamis means. Accompanying signs, miracles, and wonders. I have a question, church. I'm moving rapidly. If y'all stay with me, I have a question. When did it become acceptable to preach or to do church with no signs, with no miracles, with no wonders? When did that become okay? Who, who authorized it? Who, who said we could change it? This is the crux of my message because y'all's pastor that God is raising up here in Memphis, this church that God is raising up, I'm telling you all, the fire that burns in me, as I've said to y'all many times, if we don't see God show up, I'm going to the house. I might as well sit at home. I could be at home right now. I could be watching TV or doing something else. I mean that from my soul. We, we are called to be change agents in this earth. There has to be some power. There has to be some power. Remember what we meditate on continually will come to pass. Today I would like to close by examining some highlights and meditating on God's accompanying signs, miracles, and wonders confirming his word. I want to show us church, if y'all will just go with me as I close today. I want y'all to see from the beginning of the Bible to the back, it was always signs, miracles, and wonders confirming God's word. There's never a time when it was not. So it shouldn't be today. If y'all turn to Exodus chapter 7, please. We're closing. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. We're going to read verses 8 through 13. If y'all read with me, we have them on the screen. I would really like for you to see this in your own Bible. Exodus chapter 7. Verses 8 through 13 reads, Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Pharaoh will demand, show me a miracle. When he does this, say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it down in front of Pharaoh, and it will become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did what the Lord commanded them. Aaron threw his staff before Pharaoh and officials, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called in his own wise men and sorcerers. And these Egyptian magicians did the same thing with their magic. They threw down their staffs, which also became serpents. Watch this, but then Aaron's staff swallowed up their staff. Pharaoh's heart remained hard, and he still refused to listen, just as the Lord predicted. We're talking about signs. Miracles and wonders confirming God's word. 
If y'all turn to 2 Kings, please. 2 Kings chapter 6. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. 2 Kings chapter 6. We're talking about accompanying signs. Verse 1 reads, One day the group of prophets came to Elijah and told him, As you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. Let's go down to the Jordan River where there are plenty of logs. There we can build a new place for us to meet. All right, he told him, go ahead. Please come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. So he went with them. This is Elijah we're talking about. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. Verse 5, but as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe head fell over into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. Elijah said, where did it fall? The man of God asked. He, when he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick, threw it into the water at that spot. Then the axe head floated to the surface and grabbed it, Elijah said. And the man reached out and grabbed it. We're talking about signs, miracles, and wonders. Hold on, church. Hold on. I can feel it right. I can feel it rising in the room right now. There's, there are people telling you those were metaphors. The axe in the water was God was really talking about angels in the sky or, or birds flying. No, no, no. An axe came up. Signs, miracles, and wonders. Y'all would say in the same book, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 20, please. 2, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 9 through 11. We're in 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 9. It reads, Isaiah replied, this is a sign, if y'all would say a sign, from the Lord to prove that he would do as he promised. Would you like the shadow on the sundial to go forward 10 steps or backwards 10 steps? The shadow always moves forward, Hezekiah replied. So that would be easy. Make it go 10 steps backward instead. So Isaiah the prophet asked the Lord to do this, and he caused the shadow to move 10 steps backwards on the sundial. Amen. Signs, miracles, and wonders. Let's go to Acts. Let's flip over to the New Covenant, the New Testament. Acts chapter 5, please. T. here and Dre, if y'all wouldn't mind making your way to the instruments. Acts chapter 5. We're going to read verse 12. The Acts of the Apostles. Verse 12 reads, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord on Solomon's porch. Church, of y'all flow with me one more second? There are those out here that are teaching because they don't have any power. They don't have any dunamis. They're saying, oh, those miracles stopped with the apostles. Okay, okay, Bible student, show me in the Bible where it says miracles stopped with the apostles. It's not in there. So that means you're just making it up. You know, when people don't have the ability to do something, they'll make up something else to distract you from what they're not able to do. They don't have any power. So they said, oh, miracles stop. No, no, they stop with you. Because you don't have any power. There's nowhere in the scripture where God said they stopped. Y'all turn to Mark chapter 16, please. I believe this is our last scripture. Mark 16, I want you to see this in your Bible. This is probably written in red. Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. This is Jesus speaking in Mark chapter 16. Jesus is getting ready to depart the earth. And he's making some last minute statements to his disciples. Jesus says, these miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name. They will speak with new tongues. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink any poisonous, it won't hurt them. Anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. 
Faith Community Church. Jesus said these signs, these accompanying signs are going to follow those who believe. He said they will lay hands on the sick and the sick is going to get well. Amen. Amen. Church, the reason the churches are not full is because there's no power in the church. No, it's not because people have, you know, people hate the church. Let me, I'm going to prove it to you. I, I live in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm in the South. And I'm telling you, we've had a lot of funerals because of COVID and, and different things. And, and you know where they have most of their funerals at? Some of them at the funeral home. But the majority of their funerals, you know where they go? They want to come to church. We, we've had funerals at this church. Why? Because they know what the church is. They respect the church. They're just not interested in coming right now because ain't nothing happened in the church in the last 20 years. Church boring. Nothing happening in the church. Y'all going to shout at 10.50 last time, like, just like you did last Sunday? You're going to work up a shout. The preacher going to hoop at you a couple of times. You're going to raise about three or four offerings. And we're going to do that again next week. No accompanying signs. No miracles. Look, look. You start laying hands on some folk and casting out devils and watch what will happen to the church. Start laying hands on the sick and watching them get well. You don't have to, you don't have to run no advertising campaign. You don't have to tell nobody. They'll tell everybody for you. They'll tell everybody for you. Jesus said these signs will follow those will accompany those who believe amen thank god for the word signs miracles and wonders you know church we've moved into a time to where just talking is not going to get the job done we must have accompanying signs confirming god's word in the earth Amen. Listen, we gave an assignment to our church. If you'll go to our website, if you want to follow along with us, if you would go to memphisfaith.com and go to the TV and radio broadcast tab and then click on sermon notes. If you go to sermon notes, you'll see today's message and a document. You can click on that document. It's a Word document. Download it to your phone and it has over 130 miracles, signs and wonders from the scriptures. And we're asking our church for the remainder of 2022 to rehearse at least one sign, one miracle, one wonder for the remainder of the year, at least one a day. We believe that as we begin to meditate on signs, miracles, and wonders, as noted in the scripture, that we'll begin to see them in our services again. Amen. Thank you for listening today. Blessings to your week. We look forward to seeing everybody the next broadcast.